In this video, we're going to look at GS3 display settings for Harvest. First, we're going to select our combine. Then we're going to select our header. Then we're going to select the icon that has the header width. Then we're going to select the width of our header and enter the correct width. The width affects our documentation, so we want it to be correct. After that, we're going to adjust our record stop height. I've just got some typical values in here, but you want to adjust accordingly. This is when the um, documentation starts and stops, so make sure that's set right. Then we're going to select the auto icon at the right and make sure automatic header modes are selected. I've got three typical settings um, checked here. This is what I recommend. If you wish to add, um, say, the real speed resume or the real position resume or your fore after zoom, you can check mark those boxes as you wish. That just means when you hit on your hydro handle, when you select the buttons one, two, and three, say number two, it will resume to the position um, of the reel you were just at or the real speed you were just at. Okay. Um, to reset those, you adjust them and then press and hold the button until the icon blinks on the corner post. Next, we're gonna go into the GS3 area. Now let's make sure that our resources are set right. Select the resources button and resources tab and confirm that your client farm and field is set, your task and your year. Next, we'll go to the equipment button, machine tab and change offsets. You'll see here um, some of the important offsets we want to, to uh, change are B, our inline distance from our front axle to the GPS receiver. Make sure that's measured and correct. We also want to enter C, the inline distance from the non-steering axle to the header connection point. Vertical distance D entered here is only used for Surface Water Pro applications. The important place to enter the height of the receiver is in the receiver settings itself. We will show you how to do this later in the video. After that, we want to go back out, select our equipment, and go to the header tab, go to change offsets, and then adjust our B value. Um, A plus B is actually our documentation or section control location, okay? But in this instance, we want zero for um, all these dimensions except for B we want to put in as our measurement from basically where the knife is to where your connection point is on the header. So make sure that's right. And you will have to change this depending on whether you've got a draper head or an auger head or a corn head. Um, I've got a typical example in here for a draper I used, but please measure accordingly to what you have on your machine. Another thing I wanted to mention was overlap control. Make sure this is checked on. What it does is it prevents overlap in your documentation. So when the header goes over a spot that's already been covered, it won't cover that twice. So make sure that's checked. Now we're gonna go to the documentation button, go to our harvest settings and select our crop type, brand and variety. After connecting the header, there's some critical calibrations that should be done. Our header raise speed calibration, our header calibration, mass flow vibration calibration, moisture sensor temperature calibration, TCM calibration, and finally, our moisture correction and yield calibration. All right, we're gonna get started with the calibrations. We're gonna select the combine icon, then we're gonna select the diagnostics icon, then we're going to select the calibration button. You'll see it the right hand side there. And we're going to go through the calibrations list and find feeder house raise speed. Then we're going to go down and we're going to hit enter and we're going to follow the instructions. After that, we're going to do a header calibration. This will calibrate the header for either flex mode or rigid mode, depending on the situation. Remember for rigid mode, drop those sensors before you do your calibration. With some older headers, you will need to um, fasten a connector or a harness um, before you do a rigid mode calibration. Next, we will do a mass flow vibration calibration. 
For this calibration, you want to make sure the separator and header are engaged and the header is in operating position and that the grain tank is empty. Also, engine speed should be set to normal harvesting engine operating speed. What's going on during this calibration is the sensors registering a no-flow situation and basically measuring the vibration out of the machine without any grain flow. Therefore, when grain flow is going across the sensor, it can differentiate what is actual grain flow versus what is just machine vibration. Next, we want to do our moisture sensor temperature calibration. First, we need to make sure that our moisture sensor is empty. To do this, take out the two pins at the bottom of the sensor, remove the little auger and make sure everything's empty. Put it back together and then proceed with the calibration. This calibration is really just setting to make sure the temperature is reading co correctly. What you want to do is offset it so that the sensor temperature measures the same as the ambient temperature outside the combine. Next thing, receiver. So select your receiver, go to the setup tab and enter your height. This is very important as you'll see the height differs quite a bit um, from a tractor. So if you're taking a receiver from your tractor to your combine, you've got to make sure this height is correct. And then while we're in this page, I just wanted to mention, make sure that uh, you calibrate your TCM. If that's moved or you have a new header on the front of the combine, it's always a good idea to calibrate that TCM. These next two calibrations take place in the field. The first one is the moisture correction. And basically we want to make sure the moisture meter in the combine matches what we know to be true. To set the moisture correction, we're going to go to the settings button on the right side, then select the moisture settings. Click on moisture correction, and now we're going to have to calculate what that is. Moisture correction equals actual moisture, subtract the combine moisture. So for example, say the elevator is reading 13%, Combines reading 12%, that correction would be a positive one that you would put in there. Finally, we want to do a yield calibration. So select on the diagnostics button, go to the calibration button and find yield. Please refer to John Deere's YouTube channel called Go Harvest for complete details on doing a yield calibration for your John Deere combine.